The waiver wire for week 14 is very interesting because we also have a slew of wide receivers who are starting to see a melt up in targets and workload, and that's driving some questions on what to do in fantasy football. One of these players is Jonathan Mingo, a hot rookie wide receiver from this year's draft class who's starting to see more targets starting to score a little bit of fantasy points, and everybody's looking at him wondering what to do. We're going to go over whether or not you need him for fantasy football. We're also going to cover his dynasty fantasy football value. If you're into dynasty fantasy football or you're interested, let me know in the comments below. I'll drop you a website where you can look at some leagues. Maybe you want to join a league, learn more about dynasty. I'm also a good resource for that. Hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about Dynasty Fantasy Football. I'm also here to help you with the waiver wire. I'm here to help you set your lineups and everything else. I'm a good resource in the offseason before your drafts. If you don't hit that button, you're going to miss out on all that content. So hit that subscribe button. Stop missing out on that. But let's look into Jonathan Mingo here. And looking at his profile here throughout the season, we see a lot more downs than ups. A second-round rookie wide receiver playing with a rookie quarterback. You kind of expect that. We lost some coaches on this team just a, a little bit ago. But these last two games here, 10 fantasy points, 12 fantasy points. So we're starting to see a little bit of production coming out of him. And he's running a lot more routes. He's seeing more targets. Think about that. Targets by game. We're seeing a little bit of an increase here between weeks 10 and 13. Seven targets, six targets, six targets, ten. Prior to that, it was a little bit up and down. Also had some injuries mixed in there. We had an eight target game in week two and a seven target game in week five. Outside of that, you can definitely see him heating up in the passing game just a little bit. And the reason why it's just a little bit, we're working with a rookie quarterback. The offense is in flux. The coaches are in flux. So we got a lot of changes going on. And looking at his scoring by week, it's not enough to really make him go over the moon. Even with these recent trends, 10 fantasy points in week 12, 12 fantasy points in week 13, both of those teams, Tennessee and Tampa Bay, pass funnel defenses where you want to throw it deep on them, where you want to chuck it instead of run it. You can run a little bit more on Tennessee. You can run it on Tampa Bay in some instances. But still, overall, macro standpoint, NFL teams have showed their hand. They want to throw it on these guys. And that's what Carolina did as well, throwing it to Jonathan Mingo over these last couple of weeks. But we've also seen an increase in target share going forward. Well, going back to his collegiate profile, he's a rookie. We can do that. If you're in the league one, two, three years, you can go back, look at their profile. That's going to give you a little bit more data. Here, he wasn't super productive at Ole Miss. We dealt with some injuries. We dealt with some good players on the team as well. But he hit his peak during his senior season with 861 yards and five touchdowns. The big thing to know here, looking at his stats, his ADOT, average 14 average at the target over the course of his career. His best year, 14.5. As a freshman, 14.4. 12.5, 13.8. This dude gets deep targets. He's a bigger wide receiver, which means that's great for fantasy because if you're seeing a good target share and you're getting deep targets, that means in the right matchups, you can hit, especially as he's developing. He's a little bit more of a raw prospect compared to some of the other top drafted wide receivers. But still, there are some things in his game that could allow him to ascend at the NFL level. And the one thing is the size of just athleticism. Six foot one, 226 bounds, and also a 90th some percentile size adjusted speed score. Running a 4.46 at 226 pounds, that's something you do not see every day. He is one of the few big wide receivers in last year's draft class that got draft capital. So he was one of the few that you could see as an alpha wide receiver, and he's really developing into this role. And he's a young guy. They got Adam Thielen there getting targets, and you're seeing him increase throughout the season which is a good sign which is a good sign for a rookie who was drafted in the top part of the second round that means the Carolina Panthers sat there stewed there for a bit overnight after the first round and said hey we need Jonathan Mingo we need him on our team he can really help us out especially when we look at his upside and his growth potential and then over the last four games 
looking back at that, because this is where we're seeing that little bit of a melt-up happen. 7.3 targets per game, a 26.4% target share. So when a wide receiver seeing a 20% target share or higher, you can say do not leave them on the waiver wire. You got to pick them up. However, we know about the quarterback position. We know about the Panthers. We understand looking the other way in this scenario. 36 routes per game, 93.5% route participation rate, 70.3 air yards per game, seeing a 33% share of the air yards. Very solid. So if they're pushing more air yards in the offense, if Bryce Young is slinging it deep, he's going to be in the hundreds. Easy. In those plus matchups. 7.4 PPR fantasy points per game. That is why the price isn't going ballistic right now. Any other wide receiver seeing those numbers would get a higher points per game. That is just cause and effect, especially over a sample size of four games or more. You would see more fantasy points. That is causing the price to stay low. That is causing him to stay on the waiver wire. And that's probably why he's still on the waiver wire after the week 14 waiver wire run. But do you need him for fantasy or not? We're going to talk about that. But first, let's dig into his dynasty profile because that's very important. We got a rookie here who was drafted in the top part of second round of rookie drafts who had a lot of hype. During the rookie draft season, during draft season in general, due to that size of just athleticism, due to a lot of rumors coming out for the NFL draft, due to people going back looking at tape because this dude has ball skills. He can rise up, snatch the ball out of the air, strong hands. You can definitely see him with the right quarterback excelling in fantasy football, especially if you give him some time to develop and season his game. But we've seen a drop in a stock over the last four months or so during the season and that makes sense considering what we saw he has not been productive now he's down to the wide receiver 56 range and in overall rankings on keeptradecut.com ranked around 153 overall among players that means he's very cheap and he's a lot cheaper than where people were drafting him at in rookie drafts back in april may june so now you got him as a cheaper asset. If you wanted him back then, you can try and get him now at a much cheaper price tag. So you can be able to throw a cheaper prospect in a second, cheaper draft picks, and get the deal done if his manager is willing to move on. Looking at these recent trends, this might be the last time you are able to do so before the window shuts, even if he's not productive. Because what people will do is when we're in the offseason, they'll look back at the numbers. They'll start looking at the trends because they got more time on their hands. They don't have to go from game to game in live action to figure out what's going on. And that price is going to steadily rise up in the offseason because he's flashing some talent right now. And that's something you want to pay attention to. So if you're interested in him, if you're interested in Domingo, getting him on your Dynasty Fantasy football team, now might be one of the last times you can strike unless he falls off even more going forward into next year to year after. But his price is probably going to stay insulated around this price tag of wide receiver 56, 153 overall range due to him being a young player, due to him being a rookie. We got an outlook of him going into his second year, maybe third year, but that could come down even further, could crash middle of next year. But if you want to buy in, you like what I talked about, you got them cheaper compared to April. And if you don't play Dynasty and I'm getting you interested, let me know in the comments below. I'll drop you a link. Hit that subscribe button so you can follow along in the offseason so you learn more about Dynasty Fantasy Football. But looking at the team, the targets, the workload in general, Adam Thielen has been that guy. He's starting to see a dip in workload, but not too much. You can still trust Adam Thielen. But overall, macro sense of the season, look at the whole season, Mingo's seeing an 18% target share as a top-tier second-round rookie. When I say top-tier, he was drafted at 208, one of the first picks in the second round. That's what I mean by that, but 10.4 yards per reception. So we have some indicators here that he could develop going forward and become more of a thing. That doesn't mean it will happen, but going into next year, Jonathan Mingo might be a guy for you in redraft in the double-digit rounds because people are not going to trust Carolina. They're not going to trust 
the second year wide receiver. You're going to catch him at a cheap price tag. And by watching this video now, you know there are some indicators here where he can be the guy where he can step forward, where he can see more of a target share. He's starting to see some workload. Bryce Young's a big problem here. He hasn't had a game where he passed for more than 250 yards. That's a huge issue. That is a huge issue for these wide receivers. It's hard to feel production when you're not getting production coming your way. You're working at the assembly line, but no parts are coming down. That's pretty much what we're saying to these wide receivers. We're getting a little bit. We're getting a little bit of this and that, but not enough to make a full thing. We're not getting that. Bryce Young needs to heat up a little bit. Maybe we get that next year. Maybe we get some changes. Maybe get some added pieces to this team. But right now, that's a huge question. That's a huge question for redraft. And also looking at the schedule, it's not very great here for the passing game. The game script might break here in some matchups. But still, the game scripts are saying, hey, these are going to be lower volume games. The passing offense is probably going to be up and down. Might not be great for Mingo going forward, but looking at Mingo, we want him to keep getting targets and maybe not scoring fantasy points. Then you can draft him cheaper next year as a cheaper get, as a cheaper lottery ticket, and also still picking him up cheap in Dynasty. So you do not need him right now unless you're in a 14-team or a higher 14, 16, 18, 20-teamer whatever in your redraft league if you're in a 12 teamer there's probably other wide receivers to look at unless you really want to get jonathan mingo just to see after all he's still seeing a good target share but we're looking at matchups here that may not push the pace enough to really get bryce young going so that's something to pay attention to however the dynasty buy low is almost over it's almost over his price is going to increase incrementally throughout the off season, It's going to go up a little bit. People are going to start looking at these trends. They're going to start talking about them. They're going to watch this video. The price is going to go up. And if you're one of those dynasty players who think, hey, this wide receiver, I know I can pick him up at a cheaper price tag a few months down the road in season, and I'm waiting for that. Well, that time's about up. And if you're going to make that move, make that move. I'm not telling you whether or not he's a buy or sell. But I'm letting you know what the market's doing right now and what to do with what you want to do. And the time's almost up. Time's almost up on Jonathan Mingo. The price is going to start increasing. Not to the moon. It's not going to go up that far. But still, I would rather have him at this cheaper price point right now at week 14, week 15 range before the market starts realizing he is showing some indicators that he could be something in 2024, 2025, and you do not want to pay a little bit more when you can catch them dirt cheap. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.